Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about uh, an application of differential equations of tank mixture problems. So we're going to do a quick uh, derivation and example. All right, so what we have here, the, the kind of modeling setup, is we're going to have a tank. We'll draw that tank. It's just a big bucket. Like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a spigot going into that tank, and it's going to be pouring uh, some sort of mixture into it. And that will have a, uh, a rate in, in uh, um, some sort of volume, and the units will be some sort of volume over time. So, uh, for instance, it might be liters per second. Okay. All right, there'll be the rate in. So that's R in right there. All right, and then we're going to also have a spigot coming out of the tank like that. We're going to have an R out right there. So for now, we're just going to take R out to be equal to R in. And that implies that, uh, and, and we're also going to have this tank filled with some volume of water. It, it means that the volume is constant. Because whatever is uh, going in, there's the same amount going out. And so the volume inside the tank of liquid will always stay the same. Okay, so um, on top of that, what we're also going to do is we're going to then take a, a let x of t uh, be uh, some uh, quantity of dissolved dissolved stuff uh, in the volume v. Okay. So uh, the classic example is salt. And so the quantity then, x then, would be in uh, grams, for instance. Gra so it would be grams of salt. So inside the tank, there's some x of t grams of salt. OK, so how did the salt get in there? Well, we, it could have been in there initially, or we could be putting it in. So in addition to uh, having the liquid coming in and liquid coming out, the actual liquid that is going in, we can actually put, say, that the input concentration is um, what we'll call C in, and that will be in units of um, grams or mass of some type uh, per unit liter or per unit volume. So I'll go liter. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so, uh, and then uh, what we want to know then is, so the question, the ultimate goal is to find um, x of t, uh, the, the grams at, at every point in time going forward. So of course, we always start with some initial, initial amount. The initial will be x of t, x at zero is equal to some initial amount, we'll say x, x naught, some, some amount of grams that were already in there. All right, and then of course we'll set these parameters r in, r out, and c in to be whatever they are. Okay, so what we need to do then uh, is then, so to find out the initial amounts, then what we do is of course we always set delta t to be some, some, to be uh, some small uh, uh, time, time step, and say basically uh, a given x of t is the amount that we have, I want to know um, how much at x at t plus delta t. I want to know how much this is going to be next after the small time step. So what we do is we have to basically add the inputs and the outputs. Okay. Or sorry, and subtract the outputs. So what we do is say that the time at time t plus delta t, we have so much. And of course, it's going to be equal to, at least approximately equal to, the amount that we have in the previous step of time, plus whatever water was coming in. So what volume of water came in? Uh, and so the volume of water, of course, is going to be Rn uh, times delta T. All right, and that's the volume of water. And then to know how many grams of salt came in with that, we, of course, we have to mu multiply by Cn. Okay, and so let's look at that. That right there, of course, is the input. 
and of course Rn, that's liters per second, uh, times second. So that's liters per second, that's second, and then this will be, of course, grams per liter. We see there's canceling of units, and we're left only with grams. So, of course, we're getting some summation of some amount of grams of salt that came in that added on to the current amount that we have. Right, and there's also, of course, the amount that came out. We have to subtract that. So that R out, uh, so what we do is we put R out uh, times delta T again. So that's the volume of water that came out during that small window of time. And then we have to multiply by C out. So we haven't talked about C out yet, but C out is pretty easy to get. C out actually depends on the amount that's in there at that time, which is going to be X over V. So we'll put that there, X, uh, oops. Um, so put, putting this all together, of course, uh, so this, this right there, of course, is going to be output right there, and we get the same units from that. So what I'm going to do is go over to another a page and finish this off. So again, we had our equation was as follows, and then we had R in, delta T, C in, and then we had minus R out, which is the same as R in, delta T, and then we're going to have X over V, right? That's our that's our, uh, our, our, and this is approximately equal to right there. So again, what we're going to do is do a little algebra, and we're going to move that over to the other side and divide by delta T. And then what we have is Rn Cn uh, minus uh, R out over V times X take delta t going to zero, and we get the resulting differential equation. dx dt is equal to rn cn minus r out over v. So these are two constants representing some input rate and an output rate times the amount that's in. So this, is, of course, is a linear uh, first order. Uh, equation, or DE. Okay, so we can solve it using linear first order methods of use an integrating factor. All right, so let's now give an example uh, and show how this works. Okay, so let's do a, a, an example. So what we're going to take is now a volume that's going to be 10 uh, liters. Okay, so there's our tank. Okay, our volume will be 10 liters. Our Rn is going to be equal to 0 0.1 uh, liters, of, uh, per, uh, liters per second. Okay, so that's like a, a pretty strong faucet of water, and that will be the same as R out. Okay, um, and now, uh, now we're going to talk about concentration. We'll say the concentration in is going to be, uh, let's say, um, 100 grams. Uh, per liter. All right, uh, and uh, well, and then of course again, C out is going to be equal to X over L, and then our initial condition is going to be we're going to start with no salt in the tank at all. All right, so we want to know basically if I start filling this tank with salt water, uh, but we start out with fresh at the beginning. And now I want to know how this thing fills with salt. What is the what is going to be the amount of salt in this tank as as time goes forward? All right. So again, the goal is to find uh, so find x of t. Okay. We know the initial condition is there's no salt at the beginning. <clears throat> All right. So let's put this differential equation together. We have uh, dx dt is equal to r n. Uh, um, so point, point 0.1 divided by 10, oops, nope, Rn times Cn, which is going to be times 100, all right, uh, and then we have to minus uh, uh, point 0.1, 0 0.1, all over the volume, which is 10, times x, all right, so again, that is V, this is R in or out, and that's R out 
and that is um, uh, a C N. Okay, so there's all of our parameters put together. Let's do a little simplification here. 0.1 times uh, 100 is of course 10, and then minus, and then 0.1 divided by 10 is going to be 0 0.01 times x. All right, so let's solve this differential equation. And I'm going to, again, use uh, linear first order uh, 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 equation methods. So we're going to use an integrating factor. So let's now put it in the form of an, uh, that we have for integrating factors. 0 0.001, sorry, oops, just 0 0.01 uh, times x is equal to uh, 10. All right, so we see here clearly that our According to the format of, a, of, a, of, a, of our differential equation, our linear first order, that's my p of t. And this right here, that's my q of t. And then my integrating factor, rho of t, is going to be e to the integral of 0 0.01 dt, which is going to be e to the 0 0.01 times t. All right, uh, we multiply both sides by this equation and we're able to put it in this form, x of t times e to the 0.01t, all, you take the derivative of that, that's how it always works out, times 10 e to the 0.01t. All right, so now we're gonna integrate both sides. And we're going to have, um, uh, uh, that becomes x of t e to the 0.01t, is equal to uh, 10 divided by 0 0.01 e to the 0 0.01 t plus c, our integration constant. That becomes 1,000. So what we get is x of t e to the 0 0.01 times t is equal to 1,000 times e to the 0 0.01 t uh, plus c. Going further, we divide out the e to the 0 0.01 t, we get x of t by itself, we end up with 1,000 plus c e to the negative 0.01t. All right, so there is our general solution. Now what we want to do is go here. So again, our solution, and again, this is the general solution, is going to be x of t is equal to 1,000 minus c e to the negative uh, 0 0.01, oops, uh, t. Sorry about that, I, um, there we go. Had a little snafu there with my screen. And so of course now we need to uh, find the particular solution by invoking the initial condition. Uh, so we put that in, and we're going to get 0 is equal to 1,000 minus c, okay, because when we put in, so that should be 0.01t, there we go. Sorry about that. All right, so there we go. So clearly c has to be 1,000, and then we can simplify our equation. Our particular solution then is going to be 1,000, 1 minus e to the negative uh, 0.01t. All right, so what does this solution look like? We're gonna give it a, 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 a graph treatment. Not like that. Okay, so we know at time zero, it starts at zero. All right, and so we can see here that we have a one minus a decaying exponential. So decaying exponentials always look like this, right? So when you make one negative, of course, it flips it along the x-axis. So when you negate like that, right? And then what we're going to do is, of course, add 1 to it, so it brings it back up. So it looks like that. And then we're going to multiply it by 1,000. So there's 1,000, and our equation is going to look like this. So it's going to asymptote at, uh, at 1,000. So that's my x of t. Looks like that. All right, so, um, so in, the, in the long time run, we're eventually going to get to 1,000 grams of salt in our tank. Um, the growth of the salt will 
it'll be more rapidly increase in, in the salt amount at the beginning and of course it, it's going to slowly approach a thousand and the further you go on in time the slower the growth of salt will be um, and so that is a, of course a, 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 a specific example of a mixture tank problem and how you set one up and how you solve it so i hope that clarifies a few things and in the next video we'll do another example of mixture concentration where uh, so what we want to do next is uh, is uh, ask or what it or consider if um, C n now is a function of time. Maybe the concentration of salt will actually vary as a function of time, some sort of thing like that. Then of course the concentration out isn't going to be going to some steady value, but we'll we'll do something else. So that's what we'll do in the next video. But thank you very much.